It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, my friends, for those of us who live in the greater Hazleton area, I'm talking about 10, 15 mile radius here in the greater Hazleton area. I got good news for you today and I got bad news for you today. The bad news is you all found out what happened uh, July 4th in the city of Hazleton, which was a total disgrace as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we also found out that there's some other things happening in the city of Hazleton. However, the good news is I have the chief here today, Chief Jerry Speziali. Uh, and the problem I'm going to tell you is you don't want to mess with this guy, okay? But I want to congratulate and hats off to Mayor Jeff Cassatt. Uh, Mayor has been directing a lot of this, um, uh, the things that are happening in the city with the police, and he is on top of it 100%. And I want to congratulate Jeff Cassatt for doing a fabulous job. Uh, Ka um, Chief, how are you? I'm doing great, Sam. How are so, needless, to, I'm fine, thank you. Needless to say, you, you've been busy. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I said that what happened July 4th, particularly on July 4th, was, was a total disgrace, mm -hmm. you know, to the great people that we have in our area, That's okay? Correct. And so, could you give us the inside scoop? What happened on July 4th on Alder Street? You know, July 4th was out of control with fireworks. We had two homes that, you know, burnt literally to the ground. Um, it was an extremely dangerous situation because of people misusing these commercial grade fireworks. Uh, Alter Street was out of control. Uh, there was uh, people that were uh, utilizing a bar in the area, you know, uh, overindulging. We had a crowd of about 50 to 75 people that came out around two o'clock in the morning, started uh, hurling these commercial grade fireworks under police cars, you know, at us. And as a result of that, we started to arrest people. Well, we were trying to make those arrests. Um, we were getting overtaken by people that were trying to stop us from arresting their boyfriend or their friend. We were holding on to our guns. We were trying to arrest the individual. Mayor Cassatt came down the street and Jeff's a big guy. Luckily, I was trying to arrest somebody, and he actually uh, did a basketball check in between the crowd and me and the individual so that I could actually arrest that person. And then as a result of that, we called for backup. The state police came. We had, uh, I believe, uh, McAdoo showed up. We had Butler. And then we had more police officers there, but they were still hurling you know, these uh, fireworks under the cars, which could have been extremely dangerous. Oh my God, yes. You know, if it had, one of the car doors was open while the mayor was trying to call on the radio for backup for mm -hmm. me. And as a result of that, if that had landed in the car, God knows what could have happened with the glass exploding. I mean, the, the percussion would have just sent glass all over the place. So the crowd was out of control. It obviously it was alcohol related. And um, we were able to combat it. But as a result of that, the mayor directed me to come up with a strategy for increased omnipresence and strategic initiatives with saturated patrols. And that's what we are doing. We have some new tools and we're going out there uh, nonstop uh, through the evening and early morning hours. And we are zero tolerance. You know, um, Jerry, it's, it's very sad because I, I read a couple uh, letters to the editor in the Standard Speaker, and from people that I don't know, but I respect what they said, I, I read this one letter from a person from Eagle Rock, and how he was for, you know, immigration, it was for, you know, the things of helping people, sure, okay? And sure. I think this immigration thing, people are really getting off on the wrong track. We just need legal people coming in, but however, he stated in there how disappointed he was in the Hispanics mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, they came here and, you know, and, and there's a, there are so many great Hispanics, as Absolutely. you and I discussed. Absolutely. They're really, and I'm sure they're just as upset as, as, as the community is. Absolutely. But what, why, what, there's no respect whatsoever, okay? That's the thing that really <clears throat> has a lot of people, the, why are they here? Why do they go any place? Why in Wilkesbury, Scranton, Red, no matter. You know, if you're going to go there, okay, well, respect the areas that you're in. I mean, I don't think we could ask for anything more, correct? You know what it is, Sam? 
it's 1%. Yeah. It's 1% of that group that makes the entire group get painted with that brush. And, it's, and they are. And that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Because we embrace the culture. Um, we embrace diversity. You know, we have Spanish-speaking officers. We have a very diverse department. You know, so you have to realize that um, it's that 1% that is making uh, the rest all look like they're all acting that way. And it's not the case. It's just that 1%. Well, if you had, did you have like 50 or 60 people that were out of control? We had 50 okay. to 75 people that were coming at our backs as we were trying to, you know, get at the first group. And they were completely, you know, overtaking us. And like I said, we were holding on to our guns because you don't want your gun to get out. You know, you can't take your gun out. Where was because the rest of the community? Where was the rest of <clears throat> the rest of the crowd was coming at our back. Like, in other words, we're trying to arrest people that were, you know, disorderly and drunk and disruptive. So as you're trying to arrest those people, you have the girlfriends and friends. You can't take him. He didn't do anything, you know, and they're pulling on you and they're pulling on your gun belt. They're pulling on your back. You don't know what's coming from behind. The mayor got in between me and luckily he was able to and then I was able to arrest that individual. Once they seen that one person was arrested and then we arrested another group, they started to realize that this is a no-nonsense situation. We're going to continue to go at you. And we were able to overcome it. Um, as a result of that, as I said, we've come up with some other tools that we will use in the future. We're going to talk about those. The, the, the thing is that day, okay, um, uh, when you arrest them, what, what do they get charged for? I mean, what's the punishment here? You know, we charge them with uh, disorderly conduct, um, a misdemeanor, um, and then they face the music. You know, look, they do can they end care? up. Yeah, they calm down immediately. Yeah. You know, once the handcuffs are on, yeah. that's when they start to realize that this is for real. Yeah. And once you're in the back of the cop car, you know that you're going to jail. So as a result of that, they start to recognize they're not playing. You know, we're not playing at least. So what we did is we've increased that presence. And now we are going citywide to all the locations. And then somebody sent me a message on Facebook. You know, um, I live near, you know, specific bars and specific areas of town. So we look at crime data and then we find out where there's problems and disruptions and quality of life and noise and all of the different drunken disorderly. And then what we do is we go citywide all night long, aggressive driving, walking with 10 to 12 officers. You know what that looks like when you're walking both sides of a street? Yeah, we walk the city. Yeah. So it works very well. Pennsylvania State Police, got to give them a shout out. They're always there with us. Um, come into the city, help us out. Same with uh, you know our partners, whether it be Butler or the other towns that uh, support us. They come in and help us out whenever we need it. Now, the, the seriousness of that particular day, okay, from what people were told me, okay, who were involved or looked at this, you realize that, like you said, when, when Mayor Cassatt was making a phone call and someone could have thrown something, uh, whatever, into that car, probably could have killed a man. Yes. Uh, you um, and all the other police... Please. Glass would have went flying. Yeah, would have went flying. Okay, someone could have been seriously hurt. So Absolutely. I mean, these are critical things. You know, yes. I mean, yes. sometimes you're looking at riots. Okay, it's, it was just about that. Is that right? It was just about that. Yeah, you said something before, and um, I got a, received a number of phone calls. What do you What are you going to do about this, Sammy? Like it's something, Mike. I I I said I'm going to bring the chief on, so we could explain exactly what you are doing, okay, in the city of Hazelton. And here again, Jerry, if you remember going back when you first came, we talked about the need of police departments, sure. okay, how many cops we need. Uh, certainly, we're about 43, you said right now, 45 Correct. would be ideal. But thank God we're getting close to that. Yes, and we thanks are. to your efforts and the mayor's efforts, sure. getting the grants and whatever you need. Absolutely. Okay? So the thing is, you know, uh, and th then. You know, you said they paint everyone with the brush. Yes. Then I heard about everything. What, yeah. what is HIP doing? You know, they're supposed to be helping us with sure. the, you know, the Hispanics. They're doing nothing. You know, the city's doing nothing. Sure. You know, they're coming in here, ruining our city. They're disrespecting everything. Sure. You know, the blight situation. And uh, you hear the, the litany mm -hmm. that comes on you. And it's not true. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not true. Because, Absolutely. I mean, HIP's doing a fabulous job as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. I mean, in helping a lot of people. Uh, and I know a lot of Hispanic people, Absolutely. good friends of mine. How do you... 
How do you settle some people down? I mean, that have this, you know, anger in them right now. You know, you have, we have to, from the police department's uh, standpoint, we have to work with, you know, we're going to create a chaplaincy program that's worked in other jurisdictions. Um, and I've met with several of the Hispanic pastors and Hispanic leaders. We're trying to bring them in to help us with some crime watch, to help us with identifying the problems, because they don't want to be painted with that brush. They don't want that 1% to make them look bad, because they want to live a decent life and they want to go on about their business, but they don't want to be painted with that brush. Mm -hmm. So I've had several meetings and we have increased our patrols. The next day we got right back out there and we have been Alter Street on Sunday night. I worked at midnight until about 4.30 in the morning and I'll tell you what, no one. You could have walked up and down that street. We had, you know, 12 wide walking up and down the entire block and I'll tell you what, no one. And anybody that was out, you know, if you were loitering or you were blocking a public passageway or you were drunk and disorderly, you go. Folks, I'm talking to Chief uh, Jerry Speziali, and uh, I realize a lot of people are very upset uh, in, in, in Hazleton and surrounding areas. Uh, however, um, the chief certainly is on top of things, and what we don't want to do is have that lynch mob mentality and, you know, every hang them all up, you know, I mean, it's... Like when we were Italians, we came over here, you know, they, they tagged us with the mafia and we're all bad because we're Italians. That's not true. Uh, this, the Irish, the Polish, it's, it's, it, we, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is correct the problem. And uh, their website, hazeltonpolice.com, you know, you can send in your tips, you can send in what you think and how you feel on that particular thing. We come back, we're going to talk about the strategy now that's going on. Recently, the other day, um, there was a lot of bars cleaned up, okay? and. Um, uh, we're seeing, I told you, you don't want to mess with Jerry Speziali. You just don't want to mess with this guy. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam Lasant. You're watching The Sam Lasant Show. And remember, folks, 24-7, 24-7, download our app, SSP TV. Search SSP TV. Why? You're going to see about 20-some local television programs that affect your life. A show like today that I'm doing with uh, Chief Speziali. Uh, is very informative, something that you could learn something from. And interesting enough, folks, for our Hispanic friends who have the dish and who have um, direct TV and satellite, um, you should have cable, but however, you could download our YouTube, download YouTube and search SSP TV. And folks, all of the shows can be translated into Spanish. So um, now we have an opportunity of letting them know what's going on in the area. Uh, Chief Speziali is with us today. Um, so after this, well, not after, you've been working on strategies before that. Sure. These things pop up like the pimple just burst. Exactly. Okay. So what are some of the strategies that you've been putting in, 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 into effect? Because I haven't had we, you on We the have show. something that's called crimereports.com. So it c directly links to the communication center. So every crime, every call for service goes into a map of Hazleton. So I can run Hazleton and then I can look at different, you know, bubbles or pin maps and I can click on them and I can see what crimes were in what areas. So I know from that how to base my strategic initiative as to where we're going to go and at what time you know, we're gonna be in those areas. So we use that empirical data. We then go out with strategic patrols, uniform patrols, uniform cars, and we saturate all of those problem areas. Well, while we were doing that, like I said, Alter Street was extremely empty for the last you know, uh, week since we've been putting these patrols on. So as a result of that, we've started to span out throughout the entire city. I ended up posting a picture on Facebook and someone said, you know, the bars, and they named specific locations, are problematic after two o'clock in the morning in these locations. So what we did is we simply went, we paid a visit. Uh, as the bars were emptying at two o'clock in the morning, We'll take those units and we'll go with that 10 or 12 strong, put the lights on, be in the parking lot, everybody coming out, very professional, in the cars, time to leave. In the cars, time to leave. And then we'll go from area to area and simply make sure that nobody stays, you know, malingering, walking on people's property, you know, uh, breaking into cars, whatever it is that may, uh, fights, all of those things. and. 
The night we did that and added it with the strategic patrols, we had one call for service on a midnight. Usually we'd have 30. We had one call and it was an alarm that was just a faulty alarm. Mm -hmm. We had no noise calls, no fights, so, no domestics, uh, no nothing. When you, when, I, when you went to these specific bars that people said that, you know, there has to be concern. So were there any arrests made on any of these bars? Only at the last location <coughs> we went to, mm -hmm. over on Diamond Avenue in uh, the Carson Street area. We went to that location and as we got there, somebody was fighting. So, you know, you had this large group of police officers. Somebody started to flee from the fight. Um, they arrested that individual. That individual has been arrested and charged. And as that was going on, we were clearing the location. Um, if you have a BYOB, the ordinance says, if there's alcohol, 11 o'clock, no more. So they had alcohol, was on some tables. The owner said, I want everybody out, agreed. Everybody went out, again, put everybody into the cars, on their way. So we're able to control the situation throughout the city without, you know, only one arrest, and we're able to keep it quiet. One call for service. I got a few calls um, from people who said, you know, if you talk to the chief, I said, look, you could call City Hall, you know, you could call City Hall, you could talk Text to the chief. Text me. Yeah, or, you know, believe me, folks, you could, you could get in contact with us. However, uh, one of the complaints or one of the concerns was that, you know, noise factor, okay? Yes. Um, and one of the areas, I forget on Wyoming Street or whatever, where there's extremely noise and the mm -hmm. person has a repair shop or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just noisy. So just right I now. recommended that at the particular time that it happens, if you feel it's something wrong, the call. Cunt, call City Hall. Call okay. 911 if yeah. you have to. And, it's, uh, and folks, it's 911 if you have to, um, hazeltonpolice.com, um, all that information is there. When you... Um, uh, the motorcycles, okay. Sure. What, what some people ask me, what do they need motorcycles for? Okay, sure. I mean, what is going on? So here again, what do we need motorcycles for? Motorcycles are extremely great for crowd control. Uh -huh. We used them. Remember, we were having problems with the kids getting out of school, coming up Lincoln Street on people's property. Yeah. We send them the two motorcycles. Yeah. They're loud. We push them right down the street. Worked phenomenal. I just came here on a motorcycle earlier because I had to go over to some kids at a camp. We were doing something with Cunningham. As a result of that, a gentleman was just crossing the street as, as we were walking. He says, you know what? Chief, thank you. I haven't seen that since I was a little boy. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. You know what it is? They're um, extremely versatile because you can, when there's an accident or we have a, you know, a jam up, we can get out there. Aggressive driving. They well hidden you know they're also very good because you have a great you know set of vision while you're out there you ride two together and we're able to go throughout the entire city what do you mean two together two motorcycles ride side oh, by side okay. that's how it works yeah. and then we pretty much get to see everything that's going on we've got a lot of positive compliments they were purchased with the money from the donations from the public so i'd love to thank the public and the hca yes. because they did that uh, for us. As a result of it, it costs the public nothing. And they have worked out tremendously for us. You mentioned before the relationship you have with, you know, the other um, municipalities, especially the Pennsylvania State Police. I had uh, Trooper uh, um, uh, Davis uh, Peters, I'm sorry, on the show, who is the PR person for them, and explained a lot about the Pennsylvania State Police. And sure. here again, hats off to anyone who puts a uniform on. Absolutely. Believe me, I wouldn't do it for a Troopers million bucks. Troopers are great. Yeah, and they, I mean, they're, they they put their lives at stake all the time, okay? So, yep. but one of the things he mentioned is that, you know, we're your friends, sure. okay? You know, the, the cops are not enemies. No. We're your friends. We are your friends. We, yeah. want, we want to help you, we want to serve you. We're here to serve the public. That's our number one purpose is to serve and protect. So, you know, with the Pennsylvania State Police, they're just tremendous with us. I mean, they have, they, the other night, Sunday night I worked, you know, all night and day into the morning hours, it's about 4.30, they stayed with us. They were out there with us. You know, it's a real great presence. They work tremendously with us. You know, we have a relationship that's founded on mutual respect, yes. trust, understanding and friendship and it's really a great relationship i mentioned before uh, hats off to our mayor cassette uh, who really has taken a lead 
in this area. Uh, let's expand a little bit about what the mayor has done, okay, because I know he's tied up with some things, but he's always comes on and explains. Sure. And sometimes he, he doesn't like to, you know, show off. I no, mean, he's he doesn't. The, no, he's the kind of guy Very that just keeps it. In. But what has he done? You know what? The mayor is extremely supportive of public safety. He's willing to, uh, you know, to listen. He's willing to, you know, give directives and talk with me about police initiatives. He wants a quality of life. He sends me emails all the time to, you know, handle situations that are specific to certain residents or specific to certain areas within the city. He wants a safer Hazleton. He realizes that, you know, a safer Hazleton equals economic development. Absolutely. That's where it starts. Absolutely. You know. Folks, I'm talking to Chief Jerry Speziali, Hazelton Police Chief. Um, question again is, um, there's action here. These are not just words. These are, they're actually doing things. The thing is, um, is the city safe? And are there concerns that you have that you could help with? Those are important issues. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show. My guest, uh, Chief, Jerry Speziali, uh, Hazelton Police Department folks, uh, if you just tuned in, you know we run this show many times. Go to our app, you'll see what happened here July 4th, what they're doing about it. Uh, download YouTube, search SSP TV, and you can watch all the shows. Jerry, so the question again is, Hazelton safe? Yes, Haz Hazelton's extremely safe. Um, what we need is the public to see something, say something. Call 911 if you have a problem. There's no quality of life if you don't feel safe in your homes, in your neighborhood. Call, we will come, we will address that problem. But if we don't know about it, we can't address that problem. Right. If you want to remain anonymous, go on our website. Go to our Facebook page, Hazleton Police. Either way, send that message in, we will address your problem. We are going to be out there throughout the summer, saturated patrols, 10 to 12 deep with our partners, and we are going to just go from location to location. We are not going to uh, discriminate in any way. It is going to be all locations that have a problem and a history. Folks, very simple. For those of you who live in Diamond Avenue or different areas and Carson Street or whatever, if you see something happening, just dial 911 and report it. Uh, because someone says, did the cops know about this? Well, the cops don't know unless someone tells them about it, okay? Um, Jerry, you, you have something there. You, you showed... Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a new device. It's a MK9 fogger. Uh, this is uh, OC spray, which is, you know, that red cayenne pepper. Yeah. And what this will do is this will... It's a pistol grip, yeah. and it will take... If we were overcome by a crowd of, you know, 30 or 40 okay. people that are coming at you, Instead of trying to combat that crowd, you can just do this. This will disable them. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then they'll have to get their eyes washed. Mm -hmm. But this is for, you know, people that um, try and riot or try and overtake police officers. We have small mace, but that usually is very difficult because you're trying to, you know, go after an individual. When it's a crowd coming at you, this here, um, all the cars have them now. I know you're way ahead of technology. You were showing me the little um, your phone with sure. an app, okay? And very quickly, show me what that what that what that phone's willing to what it, what it does. What this phone does is this is a cell phone, but it's AT and T FirstNet. Yeah. And what FirstNet does is FirstNet is a police network that they put millions of dollars into. So if your phone in a major disaster goes down, my phone does not. It stays up on the towers. And basically, what I can do from my phone is I can make this a police radio. It says PD radio. Yeah. So I can just go on here and just simply talk on the radio to the cars and hear the cars like a police radio. So you got constant communication. Constant, I could be in Florida and talk to the police car. That's amazing. And the car can talk to me. Jerry, all I could tell you is this. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure, And Sam, clearing well. up a lot of stuff, you know. And, Thank uh, you. It's, it's important for the community to understand that. Folks, sure. again, for those... Hispanic people who don't have cable, and I highly suggest that they have. However, download YouTube, tell them, and search SSP TV, and they can watch the show and the subtitle in Spanish. Or better yet, download our app. You know, you can watch it anytime. That's how Jerry watches the shows in New Jersey or whatever, uh, SSP TV. Uh, remember, you have any concerns, 911, report them. We'll see you next time.